And that's when we start honoring our design and our strategies, things will start to flow and it's so much more effortless and you will do the things that light you up and that make you happy. And And welcome to the podcast Biz on the Brain with your host, Anne Marie, where we talk about how to make your life and business the most authentic, the most unapologetic, the truest version of yourself. And I do that through conversations because I have an external like processor and just hearing other people's perceptions, stories, expectations, failures, and successes helps me also realize that there's a gazillion different ways to do things. And that it's really up to you and listening to yourself and your intuition and living by your own design that helps you pave the way of your dreams, regardless of all of the noise and all of the well-meant advice that is thrown your way on a daily basis, especially if you are on social media perpetually like I am, <laughs> be it for work or for fun. And in this episode specifically, I'm talking to human design coached Nikolai Krusinka. I hope I said her name correctly. I'm always having trouble with the Dutch age sound because it's a, a particular kind of sound. But she's going to say it in the correct way in a little bit. And human design is something I found out about like, I don't know, like three years ago ish. I don't remember. And it blew my mind because, you know, there's so many different ways that help you analyze yourself or that kind of prescribes what your life is supposed to be like according to your stars or your elements like whatever it is so many different ways but human design was just on point <laughs> it was scarily on point and i'm always looking for some kind of vague sense of phrasing things so i know it's just too broad to allow any specific interpretation which means you can interpret stuff into it and make it fit yourself but it really was so specific especially uh, when i looked at the numbers which break down your basic life purpose and how it manifests and like what stage in life you attract the best or you work the best and like oh my gosh it's super complex it's multiple like disciplines merged into one i do not assume that i know all that much about it i just know every time i hear something about it it just really clicks with me and so in this episode we're talking a bit about that and how it's not really prescriptive like it doesn't tell you this is how you should do things this is like why you suck it's not that it just really helps you to understand how you work and when you hear it it just feels like yeah i kind of knew that like it's not something completely new it's not something that just opens up a new way of seeing the world because you already lived it but maybe denied it like i did <laughs> So hearing it, just kind of a nice little slip of permission to just do your own thing. And so with that, I want to introduce to you, Nicolene. Hello, Nicolene. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. I'm so excited to have you because our conversation yesterday was just fire and I'm so ready to continue it. And uh, I wish we could have recorded that because there are so many cool things and I learned so much and I had to journal and like write it all down because you're such a treasure trove of insights and you're so caring and you're so lovely and welcome to this podcast. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'm so excited to do this with you. I'm really excited. Of course, you know, I could talk all day about my topic and you know that. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> happy to have you. So do you want to quickly introduce yourself and say your name correctly? Because I butcher it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always tell people, you know, it's impossible to pronounce my last name because I'm Dutch. But my name is Nicolina Housinga and we have this typical G uh which is very dutch so it's very hard for people to pronounce but that's all good um so i'm a business mentor i'm a human design coach and i help my clients mainly solopreneurs to be themselves to find themselves and to embrace themselves and rock themselves in business in life uh, using human design as one of the main tools yes as they should everybody deserves their main character life <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And I love that you pulled human design. Like it's one of the first steps you take because it's not just something you uh, put on people, but it just really helps. Like for me, it really helped me own what my brain does, own the way I understand and go through the world. And it's not something that 
you know, get, give you a label and then suddenly you have a new identity, but it's really nothing new, but it's just so affirming that something that you've experienced now has a word to it, an explanation to it, like a, like a science to it. Cause you know, human design has like, uh, it's an intersection of different kind of scientific approaches. I don't get the full gist of it. I don't know if you want to go into how it yeah. actually came about. Yeah, so I can I can just give you the the glossary of it that it's it's a combination of spiritual learnings and actual science. So the spiritual learnings are the modern astrology, uh, the I Ching, the Chinese I Ching, the Kabbalah and the Hindu Brahman chakra work. So those are the four spiritual learnings and the science bit is astronomy and quantum physics. And all of that combined brings a wonderful blueprint. And I love it that you mentioned this, that because that's what people are often are afraid of, that it's a label. Uh, but what it actually is, is a guideline. It's a guideline. It's like you were, you were, you're handed your user manual. Like, this is how you're wired. This is how you operate. This is how you take decisions. This is where you're sensitive for things that happen around you or people around you. And this is how you can navigate it. And that's what it is. It's a user manual. It's not a label and it's never an excuse for not doing anything. Uh, because it's, it's a guideline that's, that's all it is. And at the same time, it's incredibly valuable because it's always very spot on. Whenever I do a reading with someone, they always tell me like, oh my goodness, it's as if you're inside my head. Um, and, and that's exactly what it is. It's, it's so spot on. It's so correct. And it's so valuable to know how you're wired because then you finally understand that it's not you, you're not crazy, nothing needs to be fixed, nothing needs to change. This is who you are at the core, and this is how you can navigate it. And that's why I absolutely love human design. Absolutely. And for me, it is just a means to fortify my own self. Like when I discovered it a couple of years back and I did a test, I'm always looking out for like the Barnum effect. So like basically uh, the Barnum effect is when you see something that you want to see and then it's just like those horoscopes in, in the magazine or like yeah. newspaper. Yeah. It can apply to everybody. You can have such a vast Absolutely. spectrum of interpretation. That's the Barnum effect. So yes. it's self fulfill like it's self efficacy. I don't know what is the word. Anyway, so it just, you know, confirms it. You're wise. Yeah, uh, there are so many phrases that many people use, especially in the online world, uh -huh. you know, I, one of my, I would say my red flag phrases, Barnum effect phrases is, uh, you have a lot more potential than you're actually using at the moment. Everybody has. <laughs> Everybody has. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's a typical Barnum effect phrase Not that people are like, oh my goodness. Yeah. That's me. No, it's everyone. <laughs> Exactly. Or your day starts slow, but then something picks up and you meet people. You're like, yes. yeah, you always do. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. You yeah. might meet the love of your life today. Might. Yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So true. So true. And that's not what human design is, even though there is a huge component, which is astrology. Uh, but it's nothing like that. It's very specific and it's, it's very mm -hmm. accurate. Um, so it's very different from those barnum effect vague phrases absolutely yeah and that's what i loved about it because like when i read it i felt like so seen i was just like wait did somebody watch me like who installed the cameras how do you know all of these very specific things yeah. and then i read through all of the different kinds of uh things that you could be like i'm a manifesto which is like 10 percent of people and i'm a rare snowflake apparently and then there's a generator and a manifesting generator the reflector did i forget one projector Projector, yes. yes, right. And I read through all of them, and yes, they don't apply to me. <laughs> they didn't. They really didn't. Mm -hmm. And I was really fascinated because it's it's also like a love language of sorts when you understand this is how people work, this is how they process things, this is how their energy levels operate, or this is how they effectively show up. Like for me, um, like manifesting, I need to like lead the way. I need to do the thing, and then people get it. But I've always been stuck, or like un until now, like until a lot of my childhood, I was always trying to 
defend myself to like get people on board before I did the thing to like justify doing it and then people were not on board because they couldn't see the vision because my vision is so weird even to me sometimes until I do it and it makes sense after the fact I can't get people on board like yeah. why my thing is to inform people not explain or justify it which I've actually done yeah. and every time I just was like I had no energy to do this I just did the thing and then I told people during the thing or after the thing then I had that kind of effect that was so so nourishing that felt like so liberating that felt like in a flow and it is also something that goes against a lot of what society tells you make prudent decisions overthink everything make a pro and con list and every time I do that I just fizzle out absolutely didn't so to me human design is something that again affirms yourself but also gives you a kind of permission slip to just do your own thing because the noise outside is always so loud. There's always people, especially on social media, that tell you this is how to do things. This is the algorithm work. This is how you show up. This is how you be professional. Mm -hmm. All of these rules. But when you realize it's actually not to your benefit, it will actually drain your energy or repel people, then you're like, maybe I should not listen to it. So it really helps you work with yourself and uh, give you also opportunities and different outlook. That's how I see it. Absolutely. It's, it's so true what you're saying, that it's it's a permission slip. And it's. And I always tell people when I do a reading with them, I'm not going to tell you anything new. You know this. You have known this. But you always doubted it or you didn't trust it. Or you were like, no, but this is not the way it's supposed to be. Or that other people always say, you know, you know oh, you should do it like this or you should do it like this. But especially for you as a manifester, it's a very rare type. So most of us are not manifestors. So who are we to tell a manifester, this is the way you should do it? Manifestors lead their own way. They lead. They are the people with a vision. They are the people who have the power to initiate things out of the blue. And it may not make any sense to the rest of the world, but that's exactly what it's meant to be. So instead of justifying or explaining all you need to do, and it's very hard because especially when people are like, oh no, but you should have people on board, etc. You need to inform people. Like it's an announcement. This is what I'm doing, period. I'm not asking for permission. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking for your opinion. It's information and I'm informing you. That's all it is. And, and especially with manifesto, my experience, my, mainly female manifestors, they have played it down. They have, you know, toned it down. Oh, yeah. Because their environment was like, yeah, but no, you should tone it down. You should not be so loud. You shouldn't be the first one to speak. But this is your manifestor power. You have the ability to speak first. You have the ability to lead. So for God's sake, woman, lead. <laughs> Yeah, I've, like ah, so many times people were like telling me you should do this and that and my entire body was like absolutely not and then people were like why what can't you do the thing and yes I could push it to like having ADHD or maybe even having like PDA so pathological demand avoidance like so many things you can explain scientifically but it's just a fact that like if you tell me to do something or if it just really doesn't make sense to me tell me all of the rules all you want if I don't understand it and then don't get behind it I will not do it. I would like my entire body's like, no. So many times people are like, oh yeah, this makes sense. Like this is a smart business choice. This is a good financial move. And I'm just like, no, I don't like, I kind of want to do it from a logical perspective, but I can't and I can't bring myself to it. It's such a weird thing to explain to people because they don't get it because they're not in the head where you feel like somebody else controls you <laughs> and put the stop button on. You're like, I'm like this, this virtual like a uh, game persona and it is stuck on pause and you're just like I want to continue the game but I can't yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. and it feels like it and when I just do my thing without looking at the manual I'll just go for it like the, the way I started my business and um, was through um, well was out of desperation but I just on my own accord because I didn't get the support because people wouldn't understand I got myself visas to work in Australia and to work in Japan and that was uh, crazy and so I don't know how I did it because uh, the actual time didn't work in my favor but uh, like 
couple like a month later i was on a plane and started my first round the world trip all by myself with no job prospects with no actual plan like i just ended up in a hostel the only one i booked for one week and the rest of the year i had no idea what was gonna happen and then that's all of manifest the things... the power that's yeah manifest the power like i cannot explain why it happened but it just happened and i made it happen that's your manifestor power yeah. that, and that's and so great i love that yeah and then things just turn up so fast so quick like all of these people just popped up seemingly out of nowhere like aiding this kind of mission i was on i didn't even know what was going on but they were like here do you have business cards they printed it i'm like who are you random stranger prints of business cards who does that and then next next thing i knew there was these people like oh do you have a media kit i'm like what's that so that made one for me and another one showed me how to pitch to companies in person and you know coached me on spiritual things i was like who are all these people helping me i don't even know why and then i as as I progressed and like traveled and like did everything by myself every single day, almost women came up to me and they were like, wait, you're traveling by yourself. I wish I could do that. I'm like, yes, you can. And then sometime down the road, they would email me and say like, I did it. I finally traveled by myself. Thank you. Mm. Thanks to you. I'm like, what did I do? I didn't do anything. I was so confused with things. Yeah. But, but all you did was show that it's possible. Yeah. And that's exactly what your human design is all about, because not only are you a manifester? And we spoke about this yesterday. You also have a six in your profile and the six is the role model. So you are the role model, whether you're aware of it or not, people are looking at you and they will follow your example. And for you, it's like, I don't do anything. No, but it's like, exactly what it should be. Like you do your own thing and people will be watching you and be like, oh my goodness, I want what she's doing. Yeah. I love that because I kind of want that for my old self. You know, I, I wish I had had that person to say, you want that? You have that dream? Go for it. And not I'm just like, yeah, just maybe get a real like education and business and law and then maybe you get a job and then maybe you get a car and then maybe you get a house. And I was like, oh, I hate it here. <laughs> I hate it here. I don't want that. But I just followed that blindly and then nothing happened. Didn't get the job. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to Australia to be a barrister. And that's something I didn't. I was terrible at being a barrister and they fired me right away. And I was like, that's good. Okay, cool. I'm going to trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but that's that's another element that you, you're mentioning that that could be an element of someone else's human design. Like, oh, I need to know more. I need to do a course first. I need a certificate or I need, mm -hmm. I don't know, something uh, for credentials. Or uh, I guess. That could be part of your design. I know it's very much part of my design. I have a one in my profile. I'm a generator, but I have a one in my profile. And the one is all about knowing everything. It's called the investigator in human design language. So you have the six, that's the role model. I have the one and that's the investigator. So I need knowledge, information, facts. I need, I need a lot of stuff. So that's the reason for me. I mean, I've been working with human design now for five years. I haven't spoken about the fact that I was doing this for, I would say three and a half, almost four years because I felt like I need more, I need more knowledge. I need more information. I need a certification. I need, I need more experience. I need more, well, anything, you name it. So that is part of my design. So I know that I had a lot of knowledge but I'm only willing to share it when I feel like I know enough. So there is a, so there's a shadow side to the one, which is yeah. I don't know enough. So I need to know more before I can talk to people about it. And now I'm aware of that. I'm like, oh, they, wait a minute. That's the one in me speaking that I need more knowledge. I need more information before I can talk to it, uh, mm -hmm. about it to others. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that, but now I'm aware of it. So now I know when I'm actually in my power, which is the knowledge, the information, the wisdom, uh, and when I'm in the shadow of the one, which is, no, I should know more before I start sharing something, you know, that's, so now I'm aware of it and I know how to navigate it. And that's exactly what human design does, makes you aware of this is how you're wired and this is how you can navigate it. Yeah basically also gets you in touch with your needs on a fundamental level 
because we're all different and that's what i love about it just hearing all of these different designs it helps you understand yourself better and helps you be more compassionate towards others and helps you filter out all of this advice that is thrown in your face because people might mean well but they might give you the exact wrong advice which i often have been given like tone it down and don't be so rash don't put in so much energy don't show your emotions and if I can't show my emotions, then I am uh, actually mentally ill. <laughs> like if, if that, if you get yeah. just dead glare and dissociating, it's not good look. And then people complimented me on that. I was like, okay, I guess I don't have emotions anymore. Thank you. Let's, let's be depressed. And then I was actually, <laughs> oh, that's not actually funny. But anyway. <laughs> no, but still, but you know, this is such a thing that we, and you know, we always give each other advice, right? People give each other advice and, and very often people mean well because they want you to do well but they also want you to do something that fits into their framework but what if you don't fit into their framework i mean i i have had experiences with people who ran successful businesses and they said oh but this is the way i did it so you should do it the same way especially coaches especially coaches yeah sorry i'm i am a coach i I don't do that. I'm not anymore, but I did it in the past as well because I didn't know any better. But now I know that it's not my blueprint that I sh should be selling. It's people's own blueprint. So we need to tap into their own blueprint. That's what we're doing. So when I coach people, we look at their design and that's their blueprint. So instead of me saying, oh, but you should do this because that worked for, for me. It doesn't mean a thing. It could no. be that it doesn't work for you at all. So let's not do that anymore and give each other, especially unsolicited advice, um, yeah. but also the advice that, that that's all that we know. It's our framework. And we should realize that this is what we know. But who are you at, at the core? So could this even work for you? So um, one of my clients is a projector and the strategy of a projector is to wait for the invitation. So for you, the strategy is inform before initiating. That's for manifestors. Projectors need to wait for the invitation. So when projectors initiate out of the blue, people don't get it. They don't want it. Or they're like, who are you? Like, Ooh, I don't want the encounter. I was like, Ooh. Like, why did you approach me? Like, in, yeah. in a weird way, I was like, why am I reacting like this? But it just, yeah. it gave me the ick. Uh, I was like, I, I, yeah. like, I would love to talk to you, but please don't just, insult. like, it's the same of like, just randomly pitching people out of the blue. And you're like, what, where did that come from? Yeah. But many coaches teach other people to do that. Like, oh, yeah. oh, you should reach out to 10 people a day on LinkedIn. I don't know. One of the advices that one of my clients got, she's a projector. She should never be doing that. She should never initiate out of the blue and connect with people out of the blue. It's a rubbish uh, advice. But I didn't know that when I didn't know about human design. So, um, so now I know that she would only need to connect with people who reach out to her. So either they respond to her content on social media or they reach out to her like, oh, why don't we connect? That's what she needs. She needs to be recognized. She needs to be invited. And that may sound like, oh, it's really hard to run a business like that. But yeah. it's not. It's not. If you know how to navigate it, it's going to be so much easier. And it's, it really saves a lot of time, energy, uh, money uh, if you stop doing the things that don't work for you. And I think it also helps you uh think outside of the box like my first impulse here was like wait i just sit around and wait for things to happen like i already do as a manifesto but i'm terribly impatient so i'm just like please uh lightning strike me like i need some impulse so i can run with it but if you have to be invited to even talk to people like because my thing is like when i go online and i see people and sometimes i'm like oh my god that person is amazing i want to just be best friends um i i sometimes feel like oh my god maybe i should pace myself because that's not normal social decorum to just hit somebody up and like be super excited of their being and then 
I sometimes I get pushback. People are like, what do you want to sell me? I'm like, nothing. I just think you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I want to just be friends. I just want to talk to you. I'm like, oh, I want to just listen to your brain. Yeah. Uh, and people are like, wait, what is this energy? Freaky. But if yeah. you have um, this projection, I think there's like so many ways to go about it. Like if you step back, you're like, okay, I could just chill and like put stuff on social media or maybe I could like my favorite tool of vicariously connecting with people without just doing anything perfect introvert approach is video like you can have a brand video talk about your thing like make it really seo specific so it gets me yeah. up on youtube on like socials and you snip it up like on different like vertical clips and put it everywhere and maximize the content yeah. but it's you in your comfort you put out your vision and then you ask people to connect with your call to action instead of asking them to buy you know you can like tweak it to your human design like absolutely Absolutely. And I think what you just said, you know, that is video is one of the best ways for, for instance, for projectors to do that, uh, to, because they are supposed to share their wisdom and to share their knowledge because they are like the beacons. They are the coaches, the facilitators, uh, because they are amazing at spotting the gaps and, and connecting the dots. And they are just amazing at that. So what, what better way to share that is through video. So they can just do that. For me, as a generator, video is great too, but I need to either be interviewed or interview other people. And so for instance, Oprah Winfrey is a generator too. Okay. And the generator's strategy is waiting to respond. So we need stuff to respond to. So mm -hmm. more generate, and that's all that need a second person you need a second person or you need cues you need signs you need stuff that you can react to that you respond to and that's what oprah did all the time she interviewed people and then she responded she asked people on her show to talk about their new book and guess what she started a book club you know um when she had interviewed all these wonderful people and people said, oh, but I would love to read. And no, she started the magazine. You know, she, all she did was responding. And that mm -hmm. was just amazing. So she is a great example of being a generator and being really successful. And that's when we start honoring our design and our strategies. Things will start to flow and it's so much more effortless. And you will do the things that light you up and that make you happy and uh, and I think it's so important that we, as people, that we do the things that make us happy because by doing that, we make the world a better place. So it's not just, you know, a selfish thing like, oh, I need to do things that light me up. But I think when you do things that light you up, that make you happy, the world around you gets better and more happy. And when we have so many people doing that, can you imagine, you know, the the effect it has? It's like a ripple effect mm -hmm. that we create happy people. We create a happy world. And that may sound naive or childish, but that's that's why I love doing this. Yeah, I love that. It's just, and selfishness gets such a bad rap when it's at the detriment to others. Of course, that's not okay. But being selfish is ultimately an act of self-care, uh, you know, if used right. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to put yourself first uh first and foremost you have to be your number one you can't just put it on other people to fulfill your needs and like read your mind anticipate what you need when you can't even do it yourself like you have to do your own therapy right you have to do your own soul searching you have to follow your own guidance and yeah. it's so easy to get overwhelmed by all of the noise and i certainly have uh, been conditioned a lot to be a people pleaser and to put my needs last like every single time visiting friends or going to a party i was told yeah. and like applauded for basically being the servant like i was suddenly cleaning the dishes i was setting the table i was interacting with everybody shaking short and a good time and then i forgot to eat and drink and i felt miserable i'm like wait a minute i'm a guest i'm not the yeah. the host assistant like what am i doing yeah. here but i didn't yeah. feel like self-worth other than doing that yeah, and then just was so tiny and so small. Like people forget it existed. I like developed this talent. Like I can make myself invisible really fast. Like, but also I can turn it off. Like it's funny. There's this Marilyn Monroe story, basically, <laughs> where, where she like turns it up, like her Marilyn Monroe persona, and suddenly like people stop on the street and notice her. But if she doesn't, she 
you know, nobody saw her. I'm like, oh, I kind of get that because from being a people pleaser, I can yeah. like shrink so much. It's so weird. It's so weird. Like people yeah. often literally don't see me. Sometimes they run into me and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. it's, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm like, I'm not proud of it, but it's just like, yeah, when you're not living your purpose, when you're not living according to what you're meant to do, because you believe the advice that is wrongly thrown your way. And it is scary, actually. Yeah, it's so true. And this is also like your manifester power. So I, I'm not sure what Marilyn Monroe was, but I'm definitely going to look it up now. Uh, what, her human design, what her human design was. Oh, and I know that real quick. Yeah, because, you know, the thing is um, that because what you said about, you know, people pleasing, that's what I see with so many women and especially manifester women because they have so much power and they're not aware of the power. And, and very often people get scared off by that power because they are like, whoa, what's happening here? This is really weird. This is, whoa, you are too much. Um, so what they do, they tone it down to fit in. Oh yeah. I and did. that happens like a lot. So they start people pleasing. And, and especially, and there is another element in your human design, which is your open heart center. If you have a, a heart center that's not colored, that's white, it's called undefined. Uh, and it means that you're very receptive to other people's opinions, what other people think of you. And then you start adjusting your behavior to exactly that. And it's such a waste of energy and it's such a waste of incredible power that we have as especially as manifestors you have this incredible power and it's such a waste if you tone it down and you try to fit in because you were not made to fit in you were not made to fit in you were made to stand out that's your design and and that's i think that's that's the biggest gift you can give yourself to give yourself permission to stand out. Of course, it may be lonely sometimes that you feel like, oh my God, am I the only one who sees this? I remember that we spoke about it and you said that, like, why does no one get it? Well, yeah, it happens a lot for manifestors. And I think it's so important that manifestors know and realize and fully embrace their power to initiate, to lead, to innovate. And to connect dots that no one would have ever connected, that is your superpower. So that may be lonely sometimes, but then it's important to surround yourself with the right people who fully love and embrace your innovation, your leadership qualities, and who allow you to, to do your thing, to hold the space for you. So if you feel like be, you're being contained, so anyone listening now, feel like you're being contained by the people around you, find other groups to be in where people yes. will accept you and where people love you and where they can support you in yeah. being who you truly deeply are. Right. And that's why I love travel and that's why I love connecting with people who you don't know because it's so easy for people who already know you and love you to keep you in a way that they're used to. It's a very human nature. It's not yeah. nice. and. Even you, if you call them out, they might not get it. So if you just meet new people, especially if you are looking for more spiritual minded, or if you want to like meet other people of your human design, it is such a game changer because, you know, like they say, you are the sum of the five people you hang out with. So if they constantly tell you, you know, keep it real, like, let's just not go for the stars. Let's just do one step at a time and like, keep you at a manageable level, like the upper ceiling, keep it very black and white then uh, that's what you're going to get. And you can't just break out of that because you're constantly managing your own expectations, managing their expectations. It's just too much drain. But if you find people who are dreaming big, if you actually if they take actionable steps, if they help you and support you and, you know, maybe ask you questions, maybe keep it real, like, but just ultimately support you. And if you show up to them as you are, which is currently my mission is like also the one mission for this podcast to show us your truest self, like really authentically, unapologetically, like yeah. in my life, in the stage I'm in now, I'm just going to give everybody full on me. And if they go like, whoa, you're too, and then insert whatever word, because I've heard it all. Yeah. Then I'm like, I'm not for you then, you know, it's exactly. fine. 
Yeah, I'm saving us time. <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing, that it's it's a natural filter for who, for people who really want to hang out with you. And if people are like, whoa, you're too much for me, great, move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and I, I'm totally with you on the on the on that journey to be as you are and to be unapologetic. I mean, I even I even have a, a merchandise or a, a, a shop in on my website, and it's really uh, it started as a joke, you know. So it says unapologetic on the sweatshirts, on the yeah. t-shirts, and all of that because that's what I really want to encourage people to be unapologetic themselves and embrace all their beautiful um uh things that make them stand out all their beautiful characteristics they are not flaws they make them stand out so if you have an accent if you uh, uh, have adhd make that your thing and make that your thing and use it and and joke about it and tell people about it so you know that they will understand it's not a flaw it has an incredible talent People with ADHD are incredibly uh, creative. Yeah, because we have the random association going on all the time in our heads. Like I just look at a cop and suddenly like I replay a screen word by word in my head. And then suddenly I talk about quantum physics and you're like, wait, where did that come from? <laughs> from a mug. I'm like, yeah, it makes total yeah. sense. Like A to B to Z to like all the way through in a second. And you're like, exactly. And that's <laughs> an amazing strength of ADHD. What you said yesterday about the 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 travel movie that you just turned oh, yeah. into like a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you even come up with that? But that's so it's the most obvious thing to me. Like when I yeah. travel, I, I see a place and then suddenly I'm thrown back to like my favorite computer game growing up or a movie or I don't know, a story I read. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, what if then my I guess my inner child takes over like oh what if we could like dress up as a character and make a movie about it so like every time I was traveling around Asia and I found like an abandoned something and I wore shorts or whatever like I put on my tank top I pulled out my wig and I was like I'm not a prof like much in Lara Croft or whatever so I like, was pretending to be an action movie person and I tried to jump and flip like I'm super unfit like it was a disaster but it was funny and then I yeah. know how to edit videos because I'm also a video editor and so I made it into like an action movie where I was just like doing all of this exploring and then some stuff would blow up in my face. Like in this one instance, I was going into an airplane, which was like abandoned on some hill. I was like, cool. So I just went there, like looked inside and suddenly next to my face was a gigantic wasp nest. And I was like shrieking. <laughs> I was like, no, but I had it on camera. So like I left that in, you know, like yeah. you have all of the suspense and dramatic music and being like badass yeah. and suddenly I'm like screaming like a little kid and running away. I'm like, yeah, that comes in. <laughs> that's and that's so how funny. I want to feel people like I, that's how I want to show people how to explore the world a because that's what my brain does and when I try to explain people they don't get it so I'm like yeah. I make the video for you so you can see my head okay because my my yeah. thing is I think and I see things that project it to my eyeball like I see yeah. stuff all the time yeah and that sounds crazy <laughs> it's called Fantasia for those uh people who don't have it it's called aphantasia so like they don't see things when they think oh, things okay. okay yeah it's a it's a thing not everybody has that and there's like a like a spectrum to it mm. yeah it's really fun yeah. like so i always thought everybody sees things when they think about an apple or something you know like yeah. daydreaming i can literally walk around the street and suddenly i see a tree and like oh that reminds me of this one specific alley in tokyo and suddenly i see like a whole graphic projection in front of me and like walk wow. this alley in tokyo and then i'm like completely dissociating and we're going on autopilot like looking like zombie but i'm like i'm in tokyo right now don't disturb me <laughs> wow and, yeah and yeah there's actually this this children's book in germany i don't know if it's it's not exactly banned but it's no longer a culture classic that every kid gets to read and it's basically shaming everybody who has adhd uh but there's this oh. one story yeah all of this peter i'm sure you had that in oh yeah and, yeah yeah, yeah. If you look at all the stories, all of them are about ADHD. If you think about it, I'm like, oh, great. Because when I was read to that, I was like, oh, I always do that. Okay, I may, I may never do that again. Like that was my takeaway. Wow. I was like, oh, I did that. Okay, I didn't know that was wrong. You know, indoctrination <laughs> to be neurotypical. Yeah. And yeah. the one story was about this guy who always looks up into the sky and daydreams, and he was basically just like he fell off a cliff or something. So that was the story because he didn't listen because he wasn't paying attention. Um, 
but he was like beautiful looking at the clouds and looking at the birds and the trees and seeing the beauty everywhere but he was like well you're gonna get killed boom and it was like scary as a kid so i was like okay i may not daydream i might not look at things i always looked at my feet and didn't see anything right (laughs) so now i'm just like you know what i do i do it yeah. I'm an adult. I can daydream. I can still see things. At the same time, I'm dissociating. Like I still see everything, but I'm not paying that much. Like it's it's weird to describe. It's like having blinders on, mm-hmm. so you're not blind. You still see things, yeah, yeah. but focus on a, yeah, another focus. thing. Yeah, I, that's yeah. so wonderful, and that's such a great talent. It's such a great talent to have, and especially when you work with your clients when it comes to videography and photography. Yeah, they just talk to me, and I see a movie. You can see a whole scenario. You can yeah. see a whole thing. That for me, that would be hell because I don't see that. I don't. I cannot oh. come up with those kind of things. What I can do, whatever, uh, however, is I can improve things. So if you give me something, Bad. I can improve it. I can make it better. I can always, and I have a hundred ideas how to use it and you can keep it sustainable because like i will drop it as soon as like the dopamine is gone i'm like i can't do anything anymore i'm moving on yeah and and then and i'll finish stuff yeah and then you need a generator like yeah. me who is like oh but wait a minute so i am responding you are initiating that's yeah. your thing i am responding and i'm responding to whatever you give me and then I'm like, oh, but we could do this and we could do that. And oh, this is how we could improve it. This is how we can use it. Oh, but you can also use it like this. <laughs> and that's where you have lost interest already because yes. you're on to the next project. But I am the one who can take, finish this. So it's so wonderful how we connect things and how incredibly important we all are. Because what I often hear when people hear about their human design Generators is the the biggest group. It's 37% of the entire population are generators. I often hear when people hear that they are a generator, oh, I'm only a generator. No, that's great. It's wonderful to be a generator. Um, And and it's great to be a manifester. And if there is no design that's better or worse than the other, everyone is equally important because we need each other yeah. And, and when you know your human design and you can choose how you collaborate with people, how you choose your partners, it's so incredibly valuable because it will bring you so much joy and so much ease. Um, and then you're both using all your talents and skills. And, um, and like I said, the world becomes a better place. Exactly. It's all about collaboration and competition because I... I feel like a solopreneur for like always and it is so incredibly tedious to keep up that level when I'm not meant to be performing non-stop or when I'm not meant to do all of the things all the time because I know like I like the initial part like the, like I can do the entire process like for instance with video like I can come up with the cool ideas in the process I can come up with the, the staging and the makeup and the costumes I can come up with the actual filming I can do that I can do the edit I can do the promotion yeah uh, I can do the transcription but I don't want to do it. Like I want to do one of them like to kickstart it and then I'm already losing interest. And then it's just like so hard for me to keep going. Um, and then there's people who just like it, like to have like a solid workload to just like keep at it. Like that's how I picture generators. Like to just like, you know, solid. They just get work done. They get stuff yeah. done. And yeah. that is kind of like, what society wants most workers to be like, right? But you yes. can't just work on just work because you have to have someone who leads the f- and organizes things or that comes up with innovation, all of that. Like that's exactly. how society works. So exactly. Yeah. Hey, we're all needed. We're all needed. Yes. And the thing, what you said about losing interest, it's also a matter of energy because generators yeah. and manifesting generators, they have the sustainable source of energy. Yeah. Whereas okay. manifestors and projectors and reflectors, they don't have that sustainable source of energy. So mm-hmm. even if you would want to do everything in a project, Fair you, don't, you, don't have, you don't have the energy, which yeah. is not a bad thing, but especially when you look at manifestors, you know, you, your, your energy and your creativity comes in bursts. So yeah, it comes and goes, it comes and goes. And, and it's important to navigate that instead of trying to do what society wants, like a sustainable, 
like a diesel that's like on fire all the time. That's not for your design. That's mm-hmm. more for my designs, for generators. But then again, for generators and manifesting generators, we need to be aware of doing the things that we really love, that light us up. Because if we don't do the things that light us up, even a generator and a manifesting generator can can get into a burnout situation. Right. So yeah. we need to be aware of the things that we love doing. We absolutely love doing. Yeah. So really be mindful of what you follow, you know, who you attach yourself to. Like, yeah. you know, it's so tricky, especially if you have to like make ends meet, you just have to get a job. Yeah. But ideally, especially if you want to do long term, you need to be behind the mission, be behind the leaders in some way, right? And then the same goes for, for the leaders, right? If they just like lead blindly just because they get all of the money, they're like great as CAOs, but they don't actually care. Yeah. I mean, it just, just fundamentally that's messed up regardless of design. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think once we really know and understand our design and, and that takes time, you know, it's not like a thing that you, you study it for a bit and then you're done. It's like, I always tell people like, it's a journey of a lifetime. I mean, it, human design has been in my life now for five years and I'm still learning every day. Same. So it, you know, and, and that's what I love. And that's the one in me, of course, more knowledge, more experience. I love it. <laughs> I love it. But it's, it's so important that we embrace the fact that we are learning while we're doing it. And, um, and that's what human design is all about. So it's a wonderful journey and, and I'm happy to guide people on it. And, and I've seen amazing changes in people where they suddenly step into their true power and they're like, yeah, but this is who I really am. I'm no longer playing it small. I'm no longer ma- making, a cho- making apologies or excuses for not doing something. It's like, no, this is who I truly am. And whether you like it or not, this is who I am. I love that. Done. My job is done. I, I want that for everybody. Just my goal is just empower everybody, especially women, to just like be yourself, like, flaws and all, quirks and all. I even love that. Like people, yeah. like in, in the travel story I told, like how I couldn't go on these people because I had no more energy and no more feelings. So I was like, F it all. Um, and so I was just no filter. Like if I wanted to cry, I cried. If I wanted to like show my face and be like all funny and weird, I did that. And then people suddenly started to be like, oh God, she's weird and left. And other people were like, oh my God, I like your energy. And I was like, wait, you do? Yeah. Like so many times, like I had this one door to door sales job, loved it, hated it so much. It was soul sucking. Anyway, I went on the last sale, I resigned to myself. I was like, I'm not going to get any money off of this they scammed me they promised me a base salary didn't even do that mm. so i was like you know i'm gonna quit at the end of the day i didn't even give a damn anymore so i just knocked on people's stores and talked about anything didn't even sell anything and they actually i got seven people in a day to sign and so i got my base salary and i left this company with a bang everybody was like oh my god she's like the best like magical salesperson i'm like no i'm out and people on the doors, they, I just like, op- like the open, I was like, hey, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, feral, feral, absolutely feral. Like I didn't give it in. I was underfed. I was sleep deprived. That's usually when I get uh, to do this like energize a bunny. Like I'm just yeah. so on, like it's kind of scary. Uh, yeah. And people were like, oh my God, you're so bubbly. You're so energetic. That's And people were like, oh, I like your energy. I, you scare me a little bit, but, you know, come on in. And they fed me chicken wings. They showed me around their house. They were talking about whatever. And I was yeah. like, oh, my God, I don't know what's going on. Because I just didn't censor myself anymore. I just unleashed myself. Yeah. And it was weird. It was so weird. But I got instant reactions in a good way. You know, it re- really sorted people out. And I like to call it like the sorting head of like business. Yeah. If you just show up as yourself, you will sort out the, the people who hate it. You yeah. will be really polarizing. And I think that's a goal now in my life. I want to polarize people. Yeah. <laughs> be magnetic. Yeah. The good people that vibe with me and the other ones can vibe with other people. Yeah. Yeah. Because it just, you know, the, you paid the price for trying to fit in. And the price yes, is too high. I'm burned out. Yeah, you know, the price is just too high. So it's, it's, you're not working hard to fit in anymore. And you're not working hard to sit at someone else's table. Instead, you're building your own damn table. 
and you're inviting whoever you want and people who don't want to be in your table well that's all good move on to the next one <laughs> right there's enough tables for everybody exactly exactly that's the whole that's the whole idea here so uh, so yeah i absolutely love it yeah and i actually pulled up marilyn monroe's human design chart if you want to know oh yes i i, I can even screen share for people who want to see oh, yeah that. that would be great that would be great so she's a projector do you see anything i don't see any uh, no i don't see anything what's going on skype's not working with me oh my god no, no. i just no. shared and it's gone Oh, oh my, my god. goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, but she's a projector. She's a projector on a 6-2. Okay. Okay. So the six. Oh yeah. There I There. Oh, because it's okay. okay. Now you see it? Yeah. Now oh. I see it. All right. So the technical. Six two, the 6 two. Oh my goodness. That explains. So and much. she has everything like empty except for her head and uh, yeah, her Yeah. head and her arshna are defined and all the rest is undefined. So, you know, first of all, the, the, the projector bit is all about being invited. Uh, that's that's the best strategy. But the six two, the six is the role model, like you. Um, so she um, yeah. is all about you know being the role model, and that's exactly what she was. But she was she also had this other side to her, the side of hiding and mm -hmm. you know not showing herself, and that's the two because the two is the hermit. Oh. And the hermit is the person who is secretly, without even knowing herself, being really good at something. And people look at her and they are like, oh my goodness, you're so good at this. And she's like, wait, what? This? Well, this is quite normal. So she loves to be in her little own bubble, being really good at what she does. Um, and being by herself and needing time and space to herself. And on the other hand, there's the six, the role model, the desire to be around people and to be surrounded by people, to be uh, admired by people. Not admired, perhaps, but to, at least to be looked at by mm -hmm. other people. So there's this huge, I would say, challenge going on between the six and the two. So there is the, pe the person who wants to be outgoing and be the role model. And the person who loves to hide and be in her own little bubble. And she literally hid her entire face and persona. She was such a private person too. Exactly. Exactly. And and she was very, very sensitive. When we look at her design, there are seven open centers. Mm -hmm. And that basically means that she uh, picked up on a lot of energy from other mm -hmm. people. And as, and she had a defined head and a defined arshna, which means that she didn't need any ideas or inspiration from other people. She didn't know, uh, she didn't have to know, um, like, ideas to execute the wonderful ideas that she had, because she had them. She had, her ratio was incredibly well developed. She had the ideas, she had the ways to execute the ideas. But for the other stuff, she was very sensitive to other people's mm -hmm. energy. So being around the wrong people, people who judged her, people who were jealous of her, that really hit her hard. Um, yeah. Because she was very sensitive. Oh, yeah, she did. And what I also find super interesting about uh, human design is to not self-fame. So like really when you're managing your emotions and you realize, you know, you need to feel your emotions, all of that, yeah. there's all of this thing like when this specific emotion comes up for me, it's anger. It yeah. means I'm not aligned. There's something's off and it's basically a, a warning sign for me. Like yeah. like a blinker in a car when the tank is low. You're like, wait, yeah. you're doing something wrong. Like let's double, double check. Yeah, absolutely. And for a generator, and a manifesting generator, it's frustration. So whenever I feel frustrated, I know something is off. For projectors, the not self theme is bitterness. Yeah. And for reflectors, and then we have had all the all the energy type, for reflectors, it's disappointment. Mm -hmm. Whenever you feel that emotion, you know something is off. You're not aligned with your design. And in Marilyn Monroe's case, yeah. Uh, whenever she would feel bitterness, and of course we don't know when she felt that, but that's when things are off, when mm -hmm. things are not aligned. And I can imagine with her seven open centers, wow, that's really a lot. That's really yeah, a lot. yeah. I'm already susceptible to a lot of impulses, and a lot of my stuff is also open. 
about it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And people call me, you're so sensitive. I'm like, yes, I know I am. Like I'm yeah. literally sensitive to the sun. I can hear electricity. I like, if it's too much, if the smell is too much, I get instant headache. Oh, I, I don't like people walking by me for a burst of cologne. I'm like, yeah, I got, I'm having a headache for the entire rest of the day. I will never get this out of my nose. Yeah. Uh, like I can feel the tiniest pebble. Like I'm the princess on a pea. Like mm. I'm that person. Like I feel everything. Yeah. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same for me. Same for me. I have five, five open centers uh, uh, and I can literally feel the label in my clothes where yeah. I am. Yeah. Yes. I can see one of this. Like, it's driving me crazy. It needs to go. It needs to go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. yes. Hyper but when you know, then you're, you're absolutely fine with it. Then you know what it's like and you know how to navigate it and how to handle it. And you're not too sensitive. Oh. This is you. You have so many open centers, so yes. yes, you pick up on a lot of energy and stuff that's going on around you, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, this is how you're wired, and that's it. Exactly, it's just a fact, and then you can accommodate for it. Because if you keep pushing it away, it will just make it worse. Like if I ignore the, the tag that is bothering me in my clothes, I might get so worked up. I might get so angry and snappy at people. And yeah. suddenly everything's too loud, too much. And I don't have any patience. But if I just like change the sweater or like cut it out, then I'd be fine. Exactly. And it's not helpful if people tell me, oh, you know, get over it. Like at the end of the day, you'll fix it. I don't want you to be in the path of my wrath if I don't yeah. get this off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So it, and that's exactly what it is. So when people tell you, oh, you're just too sensitive. Oh, you just, you know, you just need to get more, you, you need to grow or you need to develop, you need to get more tough uh, or whatever. No, right. again, the advice, unsolicited, thank you. Exactly. Exactly. And it's never going to work because this is how you're wired. So when you know, you know your sensitivity and it can be used to a great advantage. And at the same time, you know how to navigate it when it has a risk, a potential risk of blocking you or limiting you, then you know how to navigate it. And that's all good. Exactly. So it's really just being in touch with yourself, uh, if you want to call it intuition, you know, in annoying because only you know what it feels like to be in your shoes, to live your life, to do all the things you've done. We can only so much understand other people. Sure, we have to be empathetic and yeah give uh, leniency and compassion to other people because we want it for ourselves. We want to train ourselves to be that for as well, right? So, you know, yeah. self-talk and, and all of that stuff. And that's the thing. And it starts, you know, when we want to improve the world, we want to improve communication. We want to improve collaboration. We want to improve family dynamics. We need to do the work on ourselves first. Yeah. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. If you want things to change, don't start with other people. <laughs> start yeah. with yourself. And and I think it was um, uh, oh god, what's this called? Uh, Nelson Mandela. Uh, I think it was Nelson Mandela who said, "Be the change you want to see in the world." Mm, yeah, I like that. Um, and and that's exactly what what it is. So and and human design is a great tool to help you get there. It's not like the only way, but it's it's a great tool. Well, it's Gandhi that said it. Oh, it was Gandhi. Yeah, of course. Yeah, she's Gandhi. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, I did read no. both of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So uh, I could go on and on about this. This is yeah. such a cool talk and it's such a deep, deep, deep topic. And I, I don't know. I wish more people were aware of human design because it's so easy. You just need your name. Or you don't even need your name, but you need your birthplace and birth time and date. And then just type it in like online. There's so many, so many websites that offer that for free. So you just Absolutely. type it in and it generates it for you and gives you the picture and like a brief rundown. And you can like Google it. Like if, if you can't afford a coach right now, but it's really, really cool to have somebody actually do a reading for you and go like yes. in depth on how everything connects to each other because you know like with astrology or I don't know, tarot like whatever discipline you you're using uh you only get the outside perspective and it's new and it's difficult to understand yeah. all of the intricacies so it's yeah. a great start to just pull it up and see how you feel about it and if it resonates and then maybe get in touch with you so where can people okay. find you to learn more about yeah you? so they can find me um on um, my LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, 
um, definitely my website, nicolinahousinghub.com. Uh, they can find me there, uh, but I'm quite active on social media so they can connect with me there. And, uh, and I'm always happy to, to have a look at someone's design and then, you know, give them some pointers like, okay, focus on this, focus on that. Um, and it's, it's already helpful. And, and again, it's really important to not overwhelm yourself with a lot of knowledge because it's like learning a new language when you dive into human design. And I would say the most important elements to remember are your energy type, your strategy and your authority. When you understand these three fully, then you have covered like 70% of human yeah. Already. It's like the Pareto principle of human design. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So knowing your energy type, your strategy or authority, you're already doing great. And of course, there are many other layers to your human design. But I would say this is the most, these are the most important ones. Awesome. Well, I put all the link downs down below into the show notes. And is there anything else we haven't covered that you want to say and leave the audience with? I think we have covered... So we have covered everything and, and I think, you know, the, the biggest message that, and the biggest gift that we can give ourselves is to fully understand who we are at the core and who we yes. were, because this shows your body graph shows who you were when you were born. And during the years we pick up on so much conditioning and, yes. you know, things that people tell us to do be or to do that we, sometimes we lose track of who we really are at the core. And that's what I really would love for everyone to connect to that core, their, their true strengths and their true powers and be their amazing unapologetic selves. Uh, because again, that makes the world a better place. Right. So if you are on this unlearning path, totally look into human design. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for this amazing conversation. I really thank enjoyed you. it so much. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. And I really, um, yeah, look forward to be connected and see how we can enforce each other more. Yep. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. You too. Thanks. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode. It has been a blast talking about human design. I think it's really, really fascinating, interesting, and I kind of want to make it like a, a small talk topic because I hate small talk, but like, how cool would it be if you just could socially acceptably ask people, hey, what's your human design? And they A, knew what you were talking about, and B, they knew it, and C, they were also kind of interested in it, and then you already had a kind of base where you can operate from, you get people a little bit better, right? So, <laughs> how cool would that be? If you know your human design, then let me know in the comments the links to all of our socials of Nicolene and myself are down below so you can say hi to us you can connect with us you can maybe even work with us as if that's what you want to do you know and yeah i would definitely love to hear what your human design is if you do not know yet that's okay because there's a good sign of websites out there that will help it uh figure out so that was a weird sentence it will help you figure it out and just type in human design chart and then probably jovian or something comes up and then you just type in your name you know it doesn't actually really matter then type in your birth day you know the month the year the day but also you need to know your exact birth time so like the time of the day because it can completely change your uh type like even a couple hours difference could be a different type I don't know why, it's just this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then actually also your birth location. So it should always ask to photos. And it will just come up with all of the details on it. And then usually the websites also describe exactly what it means. So you can just deep dive into different segments of it, like your way type and your numbers. And yeah, how you best work in business. Even there are a lot of websites around that. But if you want to get deeper into the topics because it is very complex you can have a coach like Nicolene help you with the reading of your charts but it is not entirely necessary especially if you start just wrapping your head around it it's already cool so I, I recommend and I encourage you all to just look up your human design and maybe have your mind blown a little bit <laughs> and let me know what it is I would love to connect especially if there's other manifestors out there let's be friends anyway so that's it for me today. I hope I see you around with the next episode. 
which is always out on Fridays. And if you have not listened to any of the previous episodes, do that. And also please leave me a review so more people can find this podcast because it's still pretty new. But I have big, big things planned for it. So yeah. until next week, I wish you a fabulous week and uh, say bye.